It is loosely based on the tutorial question 4748. It's a little bit different, but basically the same technique works for, will work not only for these two, actually. It will work for the whole range of questions from the yellow book. I just mentioned 47, 48 because most of the vectors in this example I took from the 47, and 48 is almost identical to this. So I will be looking at four vectors in three-dimensional space. That's my vector V1, 1, negative 3, negative 2. Here's my vector V2, 3, 2, and 1. And here's my vector V3, which is 4, negative 1, and negative 1. Oh, no, sorry, four vectors I said. Here's the fourth vector, V4, 2, 5, and 3. I will show that these, these four, they will be linearly dependent. Here it is. If I take the linear combination, if I take the linear combination of my vectors, and if I assume that this linear combination is zero vector, Remember, the substance of showing that they are linear... Ah, no, sorry. This, this time I'm showing you that they are linearly dependent. So effectively, effectively, if you can, via some very wise or very smart guessing, come up with the four coefficients, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, which will vanish this linear combination, and at the same, at the same time, not every coefficient in this choice of yours is zero, if you can come up with just right here on the spot, your presentation will be over. The problem is probably you won't be able to come up there but from the top of your head, this case. That's why we have to do, do something about it. But in principle, if you can come up with a set of coefficients here, which will vanish this linear combination without doing anything, if you can come up so with these coefficients, that will be enough to, con to convince everyone that this system is linearly dependent. However, if you can't come up with them, that's not what we normally do. We look at this left-hand side. Each vector is a column vector. And you can think of your lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4 as unknowns. And if you think it this way, this whole identity becomes a system of linear equations, three equations with four unknowns. And we need to find a non-trivial solution to this system. We all know how to do that. That was studied quite extensively in the first semester. We have to extract the augmented matrix. And we have to take it to the row echelon form. I will do that. I will, I will, I'm not going to take the, I mean, I'm not going to present the computations for the row original form, but here's the augmented matrix. In fact, because my right-hand side is zero vector, I will even skip the right-hand side of my augmented matrix. So I will only extract the principal part of the augmented matrix, and that will be simply my vectors V1, V2, V3, and V4, taken as columns of my matrix. Here they are. 1, 3, 4, 2. That's the first row, straight from here. Negative 3, 2, negative 1, and 5. That's the second row. It's a second uh, row of second components of my vectors. And the final one, it's a row of third components of my vector. I will take this to the row actually form. As before, I'm not going to give you the details. I don't want to bother you with this. I'll just make it like this. I say, yeah, we're taking this to the row actual form. Here's the row actual form. Here's the time for you to copy that. 1, 3, 4, 2. 0, 7, 7, and 7, 0, 0, 0, and 0. If you want to double check my computations, here's a set of operations which I applied here. If you care to check that, here they are. So remember, my objective is to present one non-zero solution to this system of linear equations. So one non-zero set of coefficients, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4 which will vanish the left-hand side, even though individually, none of, well, some of them are non-zero. Having the row actual form, such a present, finding such a set becomes relatively easy because that's a system which has multiple solutions because we have non-leading columns here. And we know how to find these multiple solutions. Normally, the method says we have to parameterize non-leading columns. In this particular instance, we don't need the general solution. So I'm not going to do that. I will just take some non-zero values for non-leading non -leading variables, for the variables corresponding to the non-leading columns. Here's my choice. I will take lambda 3, 1 and lambda 4, 0. For this choice, I can solve my system because I, I, I set the values for the non-leading variables. And I already ensured that 
whatever solution I will come up with, there will be at least one non-zero element in that solution here, lambda three. We just come up with the solutions. So lambda two will come from the second row, right? It's, it's, it's a one plus, well, seven plus seven plus seven. So lambda three will be simply negative of some of these two. So lambda two is negative one. And lambda, uh, lambda one will come from the first row. Uh, it is uh, lambda one will be plus three, take four, it's negative one. These are my values. Here it is. We can do double check. I can take these values and can do double check with my original matrix. Let's just do that. Negative one, negative three, plus four, zero. Plus three, take two, take one, zero. T uh, plus two, uh, take one, take one, zero. It all works. So you see, having these four coefficients, such that not everyone is zero in there, and which vanish my left-hand side in here, that's enough evidence to conclude that the system is linearly dependent. And like I said, if you could, by any miracle, come up with these four numbers at the beginning without doing any computations, you can stop right there. It just, most of us don't have such a miraculous guessing machine. That's why we have to develop some methods which help us to guess these coefficients. And row echelon form, it's one of those methods which help us to guess those coefficients. Just out of curiosity, I will just consider other choice. Remember, when I found these coefficients, I just found, so here it is. If I take my coefficients, if I put them in front of my vectors, I will see this linear combination of my vectors. Negative one for lambda one, negative one for lambda two, plus one for lambda three. If I put them in front of my vectors, we know that the solution will be zero like so. Just out of curiosity, I will just take another rather trivial variant. I will just take these possibilities for my non-leading variables, lambda three, lambda four, zero and one, rather than one and zero. That will give me another set. That will give me another set of four numbers which will vanish my linear combination. We don't need this just to conclude that my system is linear dependent. We have done it already. But I'm doing this for the, later, for the sake of later presentation. But so I will do that as well. Uh, if I solve this, my lambda 2 will be again negative 1, again from the second line of my row echelon form. I will, I'm thinking now that probably it would have been better if I just added one extra step in my row echelon form by canceling this 7. But this. I can do it actually here on the spot, but it doesn't matter. That's not really a big difference. But probably next time I will look at that. In fact, I, I will do it a bit later. Uh, and number one, again, it will come from the first row. So that will be, let's just solve for that. Uh, it is negative, uh, it's plus three, in fact, because it goes on the right hand side. It's plus three, uh, nothing in here, and negative two, so it's one. That's a Final fourth value for the lambda. Let's just do double check. One, take three, plus two, zero. Uh, negative three, take two, plus five, zero. And negative uh, plus two, uh, no, no, so negative two, take one, plus three is zero. Yeah, it all works. So another combination of my vectors, if I now again, if I now use these four numbers, in my linear combination here. Another combination which vanishes, even though not every coefficient is zero, is this combination. V1, take V2 plus V3 equals zero. And actually, to be correct, I should put here, of course, zero vector. And here should be. That's how most of the time you will argue linear dependence or linear independence. It will be linked in case you look, in case you're dealing with the it doesn't, in case you're dealing with uh, n tuples of numbers, and 90% of, of the examples can be reduced to this, to the n tuples of numbers, whether it's polynomials, complex n tuples, matrices, row echelon form will be at the basis of your argument. Some examples cannot be reduced to the row echelon form, and that's where you will probably struggle. Uh, some of them I will show later, maybe. Uh, all right, any questions, please? If you don't have any questions, I will make one extra observation on the slide, and then we move on. The observation is this. Uh, when vectors are linearly dependent, like these four, uh, 
when you have these coefficients, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, what you can do, look at this, if you look at this identity, one of the conclusions from here you can make is this one, is that you can solve for one of the vectors here. For instance, here you can solve for v3. If you solve for v3, you will see that v3 will be sum of v1 and v2. Or if I use this relation, I can solve for v4, for instance. v4 will be this combination of v1 and v2. It's one thing which I, I'd like to like, uh, emphasize in this thing, that the, when you have a system of linear, uh, when you have a system of vectors and they are linearly dependent, you can always solve for one vector in terms of the others. I will formalize this on, on the next slide, actually. But on this example, on this example, we can see some manifestation of this important fact. The other thing is which I emphasize is that if you only take here in this linear combination the vectors which correspond to the leading columns in your row echelon form, so the vectors v1 and v2, if you only take the linear combination of the first two vectors and disregard the other, the other two, if you repeat the same argument, you will, be the, you will build the augmented matrix for the system of three equations with the two unknowns this time. It will be this matrix, just half of my matrix here. The same set of row operations will take my matrix to this row echelon form, half of my original row echelon form. And then we see we no longer have any room for the non-leading columns there because the whole matrix consists of the leading columns alone. Meaning that this trick is no longer possible. Meaning that this set, this reduced set, is linearly independent. Because that will be sufficient argument to conclude that assuming that this is zero, we only have a trivial solution. Lambda one equal lambda two equals zero. So this example also shows you well, the, th the second thing it shows you, that within this larger set of linearly dependent, we were able to find a smaller set, which is linearly independent. And we found this by linking this to the, to the leading columns of my row echelon form. It's a second observation, which I will formalize in the next slide.